I'm at uh, West Lake uh, Shihua, which is part of the Box Lake system. Shihai. Uh, I've walked along here along Huhai, and the nightlife is all down here. Been there several times around Shanghai. I took line uh, eight to line two so that I could uh, find a museum to Shu Bei, what was his name? Famous painter. But the building's defunct, I think. Shu Bei Hong Memorial Museum. I think it's his former residence. It looks like they busted it down to put in a shopping mall. So. But there's the Gu Shu Jing Memorial Hall. I can try that one up here by the Hui Tong Temple. I think that'll be my best bet. And then I'm going to head down and do some stuff along Line 4 today. I've already done my Long Fang residence. I thought I might walk along the shopping street here, Hugosi, later today. <clears throat> and then take a walk since it's Friday night. I could take a walk back this way through uh, Shanghai, the hub of nightlife in the summertime. Anyway, so I don't know what's going on with the guy's <coughs> mansion, but I'm going to go down and check out the Geologic Museum, White Dagoba Temple, um, a few other things today. This area of the lake, they say, is real popular with anglers. So you see two, three people fishing here. People actually do swim in these lakes too, and you're over by the Songqing Ling, former residence uh, on Huhai. They have uh, a swim club every day. You'll see people swimming there in the morning. There's also a yacht club. I think it's the Golden Sail Yacht Club along there where they do dragon boat race practices <clears throat> in the afternoons. So that's an option too for spending some time along the lakes. They say rent a boat but the air quality is usually so terrible here it's hard to like sit out and relax. I've gotten a sore throat. <clears throat> I think mostly from running myself down by not getting enough sleep, but I now realize why all the Beijingers are constantly hacking uh, Shanghai too. Even in other cities in China, people are, it comes across as very vulgar. They blow snot rockets in the streets and all this, but uh, there's obviously a lot of respiratory problems here because the air quality is so bad. You don't notice it if you're traveling and you're spending three days here, visually you can see it. And you might feel yourself get a little dry and irritated. And maybe your phlegm is slightly gray. But it's not until you're here for a couple weeks that it really starts to affect you. And you feel like, wow. So they've done a lot of revitalization and put these signs up around Shi Shai Huang, uh, she, what is the area that they named the stop after? Over here. Shi Cha Hua, Shi Cha Hai. <clears throat> I think when they finished the connection of line eight to six here at Nanlugu, this area got a little bit of a makeover with these signs. They look almost brand new. And they just give you little tidbits about uh, people that lived in the area. It's never very fun to uh, be somewhere where there's a, a long-term health concern like this and you feel like it's uh, unhealthy to exercise 
I wouldn't recommend doing anything in Beijing that requires exertion and deep breathing, unless you're inside in a filtered air environment, maybe. Any outdoor activity <clears throat> that's gonna expose you to the smog. There's almost certainly days of the week where it's healthier for you not to exercise or even be outdoors because it's so bad. Army Opera House, huh? Gu Shu Jing Temple. They've already done this area around here. This is a hospital with the garden. <clears throat> Wednesday to Sunday it's open it says 200 first 200 people to visit are free every day from 1403 to 1424, Ming Dynasty, Yao Guanqiao built the Fahua Temple, also known as the Nunnery of Flood Guarding, Quan Yin. This was the predecessor of the Ancestral Temple of Harmony and Circulation. In the 1970s, it was entirely demolished because of construction for the subway. It was rebuilt as a memorial to Gu Xu Xing, 1988, and has an area of about 11,000 square meters. There's a pavilion behind the Ancestral Temple, a stele inscribed with poems, by Emperor Chain Long of the Qing, set in the pavilion. Engraved in the north side of the Ancestral Temple is an article entitled The Annals of Rebuilding of the Ancestral Temple of Harmony and Circulation, written by Wu Liang Yang. This way to the memorial. I posted a picture of my breathing mask on Facebook last night <clears throat> so people could see what it looks like from uh, two weeks of wearing outside. I only wear it about half the time or less. I usually don't wear it at night. And during the day, I probably wear it about half the time that I'm outside, if that. It's not, uh, it's pretty gross. <laughs> you can see the area that touches my skin around the mask, <clears throat> where the air is not getting filtered through, is still pure white. And the area that I'm breathing through and sucking in air from outside is black or gray. From all the uh, particulate matter getting trapped. And that's what it is when you look through the sky and it looks all hazy like that. <clears throat> it can be water vapor, but it's not here. It's something else. What you're seeing is particulate matter, just like if you were mixing iced tea and you put some powder in the water and it's all grainy and stirred up and gets cloudy and turns dark. It's essentially what's happening. It's very fine particulate matters in the air. It mostly comes from automobiles and industry. Ni hao. Hello. I guess I was supposed to turn up the rocks here at some point. Is it up there? Or is this it? That looks locked up. I guess I go up the stairs. So 
start seeing better days. I don't know if this is it. It says restaurant this way. this way I guess let's see Beijing has a fair number of parks it's not without its respite here we go. Okay, life story. This is him here, huh? They've got a uh, star chart up here. Is he an astronomer? I guess. Father's pointing out constellations. There he's building a celestial sphere, an armillary sphere. Construction, building stuff, maps, scrolls, educated man, pious, <clears throat> farming. That's what. Uh, is so important for <clears throat> ancient and agri agrarian societies to observe the stars so they know when the seasons start and end. Calculations, it's got an abacus on the table, more building. Construction, ancient observatory, something across the river. Astronomical observation and calendar making. Texts. Temple. <clears throat> Armillary sphere there. Let's see. That kind of like a sundial for observing the sun or the moon. They have a lot of this stuff in huge models up at the uh, ancient observatory. They have a huge model of this thing. Forget what it's for. Determining the latitude, maybe. Or the zenith or something. Mm, 
put them on a stamp. River systems around Beijing. <laughs> Not sure what they're showing here. The old city walls. So this shows you how the rivers did kind of flow through the city before they kind of cut off the lakes here from uh, the rivers. So this is during the Mongol reign. And we're up here now in this area. <clears throat> this somewhere else, not Beijing. Marco Polo Bridge? No. There's a canal system of locks or water gates. Sometimes the water gates are used to keep the black <clears throat> backflow of silt from coming into your canals if you're close to the ocean. But Beijing's a bit further away. I don't know if that was the purpose of the water gates. I went down to the Liao Jin Watergate uh, Ancient City Wall Museum down south of the uh, train station, kind of the South Beijing train station, kind of near the uh, Grandview Garden, and they were showing an underground water gate. Looks similar to what I saw in Shanghai. I don't know that it served the same purpose. This shows barges and junks delivering uh, goods up here. They call them the sand barges. They go up and down between here and the Jiangnan region to deliver <coughs> rice. It's all Mongol rain stuff. There's a procession, 1294. It would be nice to have a more of a connection to the river systems, waterways of Beijing. Usually it's how you tell the story of a city. A large part of it. They always say Beijing doesn't have that. Doesn't have a river, but not only made one of the few major cities in the world. The capital is not on a river, but it does have more streams, I guess you'd call them. Or, but they were navigable, I think, this far inland by ships of the day when the city was founded. The Aojin Song Yuan Dynasties. Hmm. <laughs>
Dream lover, where are you? With a love oh so true And a hand that I can hold To feed me as I grow old Because I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover So I don't have to dream alone a dream lover, where are you? With a love oh so true And a hand that I can hold To be near as I grow old What they're showing down here The other fortified area of the city around Marco Polo Bridge So it's what I suspected from looking at putting it together, looking at the lake systems and all that, that essentially, you know, when streams come down off a mountain and into a plain like they do around Beijing, which is surrounded three sides by mountains, that's why it has all these streams because the mountains nearby, once they get into the plains, they kind of meander and quite often run into each other haphazardly and you'll get little low-lying areas like this that'll fill with uh, water and become small la uh, lake areas and <clears throat> so. I guess maybe this is one of the navigable rivers to the ocean 1319 fortified areas along the river temple pagoda at least canal networks here's what it looks like today Jianhai front lake uh, Huhai is Back Lake and then uh, Chihai West Lake. The kind of for the whole area, I think, is the Back Lakes. And then you have the seas down below to the west of the Forbidden City. Beihai, North Sea, Zhonghai, Middle Sea, and Nanhai, South Sea. I guess that's it, huh? Give back their little card here. Shishi. That's it.